Hey guys, it's JT Tran here. And today I want to talk about a very cool subject, which is how to date and meet high quality, high value women. So I brought along a perfect guest, return yeah. guest coach uh, and etiquette coach, Maggie Oldham, who studied etiquette in Switzerland, right? Yep, yeah, thanks JT. Yep, I say at the Institute of Beauty here in Switzerland. So, what we want to talk about, and the reason I brought Maggie here is, how do we meet someone that is high quality? And I think Maggie has a really great insight because she surrounds herself with high quality women herself. So, first of all though, how do we define what is a high quality woman? Yeah, that's a really great <laughs> question. So, I'd like to think that I hang around with some pretty high quality women. And a high quality woman usually has a really great career. or she Yes, career oriented. She's very driven, um, usually takes very good care of herself, has a great group of friends, stays physically fit, has passions, pursuits, um, and I would say probably pretty emotionally stable. Yes, that's very important. <laughs> Especially here in Los Angeles, sometimes guys, we can get caught up in, oh, she's really hot and sexy, but her life isn't put together, or maybe or like she's crazy. Like that's yeah, the one I know. Yeah. She's crazy. Yeah, and that's especially true here in Hollywood, where their emphasis is on the looks, mm -hmm. but not having a very well-rounded life. And as much you know, as wonderful as it is to date someone that's incredibly beautiful, you want someone that's beautiful on the inside. So, like Maggie was saying, someone that has a career, makes her own money. Um, educated, well-traveled. I think that's well very important yeah, for me. About that. Well -traveled. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, maybe speaks a couple languages. Is Especially for someone like me and a lot of our audience, is open to different cultures, right? Absolutely. And not, not someone that's like in her particular kind of culture because that's one of the tragedies of American society is mm -hmm. over 50%, I believe, of Americans don't even have passports. Really? Wow, yeah. that's a high percentage. Yeah, Surprise. yeah. So I know for me, that's a quality that I look for. Now, everybody's gonna have different qualities that they want in their ideal romantic partner. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we can all agree that we're looking for someone, like you said, that's high quality. So how do we go, how do we meet someone, like a woman like that? Is she a unicorn? <laughs> I mean, where do we go to find her? I think there are, I would say a lot of us, because hopefully I'm, <laughs> I'm categorized in that. Um, yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> I'd say, you know, we're at work a lot, so work is a great place to meet women. If you're working for a company um, and you're in contact with women or clients, that's a great place. And then after work, charity events. Uh, I know that in here in Los Angeles there are quite a few charity events, and they range. They're not always these big fancy galas, but you're typically going to find someone who's really passionate and who gives back and who is a caring person, a person of substance at a charity event. And then another one, I think especially in bigger cities, are networking events. Yeah. So, but you have to be kind of selective about networking events because some of them can be, depending on who the crowd is, some of them can be kind of hit or miss. But um, here in LA, we have a big startup community. I know mm -hmm. the same for San Francisco and some of the other bigger cities. So that's a really great place to find a woman who probably has her own thing going on who's very driven. Right. So to reiterate, charity is always uh, a good venue. Um, any kind of philanthropy events mm -hmm. and networking events. Networking events, yeah. Right. Now, Another great place to meet women, uh, at night at least, is your venue. Now, I'm not talking about like your rave clubs or anything like that. Not that it's wrong <laughs> necessarily with that, but when you're you know, in your mid-30s and you're looking for someone serious, instead of going to like a dive bar or sports bar or any kind of like grungy club, mm -hmm. go to a more high-end hotel bar, like yeah, the hotel W. Yeah, hotel bars, yeah, are great. I think it's a great place to meet really high-quality people. That They're really classy, um, usually in a hotel bar. You you're going to be a little bit more dressed up. Um, it tends to kind of be a magnet for yeah, it's, um, you know, people it's, right after work who are you know working these these great jobs yeah. and just want to unwind. So I feel like hotel bars are a really great place. Right. It's like successful people attract other successful exactly. people. Exactly. Exactly. Same with um, nicer restaurants. So it, mm -hmm. it, 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 you know not everyone can afford to go out to the, uh, the nicest restaurant in town every night or every week. But um, you know if you're strategic about it and you pick a couple places a month that you want to try out and go. And kind of scope the crowd and see if it's a place that um, you might be able to meet people of you know high quality. Yeah, and if you're taking like say graduate school, there are women mm -hmm. that are also taking you know extracurricular activities to get their graduate degree or just sort of like continued learning. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Like continuing education. That's a you want to meet someone like that that is continually improving herself. 
You don't want someone that's like just stuck where they are. Exactly. Right? Yeah, that's a great point. All right. So, our guys, they've gone out and they've met, mm -hmm. hopefully, some high quality yeah. women. Um, what would you say is the difference between someone that is, let's say, young and callow and partying and, say, someone that is more mature, more successful? What should a guy do differently? I think the number one difference is the lack of time. So lack a of high time. quality mm. person, high quality woman is really busy. We talked about that. She probably has a great career. She probably has what I call a side hustle, um, <laughs> like a, a passion project that she's probably doing on the side or charity work, um, you know, hitting the gym. So she's busy. So it's yeah. not one of It's not all about her career, although that's important, but like, mm -hmm. like you said, charity and additional. Absolutely. So, and then, yeah, her, her rich social life and time with family. So it's really, I, I feel like for for her, a high quality woman is the lack of time. And so as a guy, you just have to be conscious of the fact that you probably can't be texting her every day. And <laughs> can't be blowing up her phone. Her all day long. Yeah. I mean, you can text her every day, but not all day long. She's probably not gonna have time to respond and then she might feel bad for not returning your text. So if you are going to be texting a woman, if that's your chosen form of communication, which I think is fine yeah. for a high quality person, we're busy, we can check our phones, be like, oh hey, you know, just shoot a quick text. Make sure it's it's an action item. So it's to say, hey, can't wait to see you tonight. Are we still on for seven at such and such place? No. So it's more transactional text. And then the occasional like, hey, how are you doing? Flirty kind of. Long like co texting conversations. <laughs> like nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what would you suggest is a good date? Now traditionally, you know, I know those of us in like the dating community, we say avoid like the dinner date. Mm -hmm. um, and that's simply because a lot of the times that's too traditional. Now, mm -hmm. I enjoy dinner date, but then again, I like going to restaurants. What would you recommend if like a guy was to ask out like, you know, this very career driven woman? Yeah, I think the perfect date for, for someone like that would be happy hour drinks. Happy so hour drinks, right okay. after work, you're fitting into her schedule. You can go to the hotel bar that we talked about, yeah. have a classier place, and you can sit next to her at the bar. So I know you've talked about before, like mm -hmm. sitting across, especially the first date, can be kind of, you can put that wall up. So yes, that barrier. You sit right next to her, and then it's a happy hour, so you can, if the date is going well, you can go to a restaurant or you can end it there. But I think a happy hour right after work is perfect, it's fitting into her schedule. Sure, sure. Now, I've had students that are, you know, they're on the road of getting their life together, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're educated and they're being more socially, you know, educated and, and acclimating themselves. Sometimes though, and I'll hear this problem, this is kind of a high quality problem where okay. I'm dating this girl, she's, you know, went to Harvard or to Yale, and I kind of feel like I'm dating out of my league. Uh, okay. Like, you know, I know a little bit of etiquette, but being from an Asian family, I don't know like the shrimp fork and like all this kind of stuff. Does, you know, what would you recommend a guy if, if he believes that she's almost too good for him? Well, I think we have to look inside ourselves and be conscious of our own value. And just because someone is, say, Harvard educated, um, doesn't mean that you don't have something of equal value that you can bring to the no. table into the relationship. And I, I do think though that there's always room for self-improvement. And um, if you want to take an etiquette class or if you want to brush up on um, some of your social dating skills, you know, the guy <laughs> to go to <laughs> and the etiquette, um, I think that's, that's important. I think that's good. And I think someone will respect and appreciate that in a partner if they see that they're constantly trying to just learn something new and, and brush up on you know skills that right. can kind of move you into that sort of upper echelon. And I think an important factor uh, to understand is that when you date and you're trying to find someone they're not there to fix you right? right you should always be on the road of improving yourself and so should she as you were saying earlier um, she should be there to complement your lifestyle she's not there to make you whole as a human being you should come like fully baked or at least you know on your way to that mm -hmm, exactly so JT and I we were talking about the power couple yeah. so um, you see these guys and girls who are like the perfect pairing because yeah. they're both super successful they both have their own thing going and then they complement each other so beautifully see to me like I always kind of look up to like Kate Middleton <laughs> I think that's a great example of someone like I would consider like a high quality high value woman that I would want to date so an educated beautiful put together mm -hmm. driven and ambitious and and you know, it's it's sometimes I run into this here in America. And these girls like you take them, you take them out, or you go on vacation. They don't have a passport. Oh. They don't know how to wear yeah. an evening gown. They don't know how to like do this and that. And they're so limited. And 
you know, that's good for a fling, but I would not call that like long-term potential. Mm -hmm. um, so anything else that you want to talk about for our audience before we close out? I think uh, attracting a high quality person just means doing your own inner work first and mm -hmm. believing in your own intrinsic value and having the confidence to put your best foot forward. Okay. So how can our audience find more about you, Maggie? You can find more about me by visiting MaggieOldham.com and I'm also on Instagram at Modern Etiquette Coach and you can also find me on YouTube at Maggie Oldham Etiquette. So I'd love to connect with you guys. All right. All the information will be in the box. Check it out and be sure to subscribe and see our next video. All right. Bye guys. Bye guys. Maggie, um, what are some tips for our Asian professional that are moving here, maybe they've got a business deal or they want to get a job up here. What are some etiquette tips that they should know that apply here that don't apply in Asia? Yeah, so 